I'd rather demotivate you and tell you don't even bother trying. It's just not going to happen. Why would someone who sells a course on how to get better at YouTube say something like YouTube isn't for you and don't bother starting? If you haven't met Ali Abdal, he is a doctor who swapped stethoscopes for subscriber counts, now boasting over 5 million followers who tune in to learn how to make their lives a little less chaotic. He's the kind of guy who can cure your procrastination with a well-edited video and a cup of tea. When he's not charming YouTube's algorithm, he's teaching others how to go viral, because apparently saving lives wasn't challenging enough. In all seriousness, Ali is a highly successful YouTube creator and entrepreneur. He has been super helpful to me in my creator journey on YouTube. He is an excellent teacher. And in this video, we're going to break down one of his part-time YouTuber Academy webinars. And if you stay till the end of this video, I will share with you some of Ali Abdal's parting words of wisdom from the webinar that I found super insightful. And I will also share with you a 10 step framework for the YouTube video creation cycle that I distilled from what he taught in this particular webinar. Now, Ali does caution that if you're thinking of YouTube as a get rich quick vehicle, don't even bother. But you can see that this is quite a long journey and there's a lot of exponential growth happening in this journey. That this is a long game. If you're going to take YouTube seriously, and I like to speaking to people who take YouTube seriously, you have to know that you are signing up for a very long game. Please do not, for the love of God, start a YouTube channel because you think this is a like, get rich quick scheme. It's not one of those. It is absolutely not one of those. So everyone here who's, here who's here, who's made less than like 10 videos, if you're thinking of this, this is your path to freedom. This is your path to getting to 10K a month as soon as possible. It's not going to happen. So please, I would rather demotivate you if you're in that camp. If you're just doing YouTube for the money, I'd rather demotivate you and tell you don't even bother trying because unless you know you can stick to this for years, it's just not going to happen. Yes, you can make money from YouTube and even really good money. And yes, it is a great way to drive traffic to your business if you have one. But he says, as with most things, YouTube success does not happen overnight. It takes hard work, consistency, dedication, and it takes a desire to serve others by creating and uploading helpful or entertaining content. I mean, he basically said, if you aren't on board for that, Here's the door. Now, Ali does spend about 10 minutes or so as a meet and greet with his audience, asking them questions about where they were on their YouTube journey, what their relationship to him was, i.e. their exposure level or how well they knew him, uh, what is their biggest problem uh, with YouTube and what they needed help with the most. The idea being that he could tailor the webinar to answer some of those questions that were in need by most of the people attending. And honestly, he did that relatively well. Moving on. In the next section, he talks about the three big steps in the YouTube journey. So number one is get started. Number two, get good. And number three, get smart. He describes these three steps as something that every YouTuber will go through if they stay with it long enough. Now in step one, this is where you create your first 10 videos and you actually don't worry about much else other than the creation of the videos and then uploading the videos. So then step two is get good. And this is where you're working on your next 20 videos, videos 11 through 30, right? And this is where you are refining all of the small micro skills that are needed to create good videos. Step two is where you actually start focusing on things like the quality of your videos and providing value to your audience. Now, value comes pretty much in two forms. You have education and you have entertainment. If you're making an educational video and that video accomplishes the task of teaching something well to the person that's watching it, then you have created value. You have checked the value box. And if your entertainment video accomplishes the goal of entertaining the viewer and that actually provides the entertainment, then it checks that box. It is a good video and it provides value. Now, if your viewer isn't entertained, doesn't learn anything or doesn't feel value in some other way, they will not finish your video because it doesn't deliver. This means you made a bad video. That's okay because you can learn from it and improve upon it in future videos. And then in step three or phase three, which he calls get smart. This is when you're making your 30th video and beyond. This is where you really start to get strategic with the type of content that you create. 
and how it can generate income, which funnels back into the sustainability of your overall YouTube journey. So the three steps, get going, get good, and get smart are the broad overview of everyone's YouTube journey. And within those three steps, Ali breaks down his five C's of YouTube success. And we'll put those up on the screen right here. The five C's are courage, consistency, content, clarity, and cash. So let's talk about where each of these falls in the YouTube journey. Courage and consistency both fall under phase one, which is get going. They are the most important things that you need to actually get going or get started. And you can't really get to phase two unless you master these two things. Now, when we talk about courage, we are talking about the fear of starting. We're talking about the fear of what others will think. And we're talking about uh, camera confidence. You know, I'm actually just talking to this black lens right here, um, imagining that there's other people on the side of it because there will be once you upload the video. And each of these are kind of their own monster, but they are somewhat tangled in one another. The fear of starting could be a few different things, but it might just be some sense of overwhelm that you don't know that you have the skills to actually accomplish everything because maybe you don't know what to do next or you you do know what to do, but you're not sure how to do it. Maybe you know what to do and, and how to do it, but there's some other aspect of the fear holding you back from actually just, you know, setting things up and pressing record. And then the fear of what others will think is something that goes through every YouTuber's mind and not just YouTubers. I think it goes through everybody's mind at some point or another um, or something in their life like, oh, I don't know. What, what will my friends or family think? What will my parents think? What will my coworkers think? The fact of the matter there is like nobody cares. Um, and if they do, don't worry about it. Ollie would say, I don't give a toss. The fear of what others will think you almost get over that like pretty quickly after the first upload. So he does recommend just like pulling out your phone and pointing it right at yourself and just saying something like, hey, I'm thinking of starting a YouTube channel. Uh, not sure what it's gonna be about yet. Might be this, might be that, uh, but I will let you know more as soon as I upload my first video, which is this video. And then go ahead and upload that video. So both of those things take courage. And then the other thing that takes courage is the uh, camera confidence, which is a whole other thing to unravel. Uh, he does offer course on Skillshare for that. And it's also built into his part-time YouTuber Academy. So Ali is um, offering all of the things that, that talk about that. Plus he's got free YouTube videos on that. Um, we won't dive into that one too deeply right now because we want to keep moving. So still over here in phase one, trying to crank out our first 10 videos. The other thing beyond courage that we need to master is consistency. And that is just getting a video out on some type of regular schedule. All right. Um, Kind of the one that most people talk about is one video a week. Um, and if you can do that and commit to that and stick to that, that is probably very solid. I think one video a week over a long enough time horizon will get you where you want to be on YouTube, but it doesn't have to be one video a week. If you don't think you have the time for that or you're not sure how to make it happen or you really don't have the time for that. Some people do one video every two weeks and some people do one video a month. Um, beyond that, uh, I. I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, Mark Rober is highly successful and he puts a lot of effort into his videos. He's working on them every single day uh, in that month so that when he releases his video, it is a really, really, really high quality video. But um, if you can get one every two weeks or one a week, that's probably a better start for you. There are a lot of reasons to be consistent. Uh, one of them is that the algorithm will favor your videos and push them when they start to notice some semblance of consistency. And I would even go so far as to say you will want to schedule your videos to go live at the same time every single week. When you upload them a little sooner, it gives the algorithm time to kind of process all the data and the, the SEO, the search engine optimization, um, what's in the description, the actual content of the video, um, who it might best serve, you know, what audience members might actually want to see it. And all of that's better when you upload it early and schedule it to air. And that's going to happen at the same time every week. The other benefit of that video going live at the same time every week is that your audience, as you start to grow it, will count on a video coming out at that time of the week. They will look for it. They'll be like, oh man, it's Thursday at 7 a.m. or whatever day and time that you pick. But if they like you and they like your content, they will be looking for it. Another benefit of being consistent is that it forces you to like finish the work and move on to the next thing because sometimes putting more 
time and effort into a video is not necessarily gonna make it a better video. The idea that it might be a better video when you put more time and energy into it is sometimes just in our head. Maybe it would lead to a more higher quality video, but it's kind of just more important that you're consistent. So having a deadline is good. He talks about that a lot. And with every video or every iteration, you get the chance to improve upon the previous thing that you did. If you never actually get the video out, then you never have the chance to get the next one out, which is your chance to improve upon what you didn't do that you didn't like in the previous one. And the last thing that I'll talk about with consistency that Ali has talked about, not just in this training, but in a lot of his YouTube videos, is to focus on inputs rather than outputs. So focus on what you can control, which is putting in the work and the task to create the new videos and not so much on the vanity metrics of the views or the subscribers because you really can't control those things once you've hit upload. There are some tweaks you can make, sure, you know, you might change your title or a thumbnail or something, but when you're in this phase of just get going, you don't need to worry about that. Just make the videos and upload the videos. So once you've made your first 10 videos and uploaded them, then you have graduated onto phase two, which is get good. And under this umbrella, he talks about content and clarity. So these are the next two C's in the five C's of YouTube success. So this is when you start to refine the value of your videos and master things such as the packaging of the topic, title and thumbnail. And you work on things like your camera confidence and your editing skills to improve viewer retention, which is definitely necessary for growth and success on YouTube. So on the topic of content, which is the third C, this is your first time that you should even be thinking about your niche. You should be thinking about your audience. You should be thinking about the message that you're delivering to that audience. You should be thinking about the value that you deliver to that audience. So when we talk about content, we're covering a couple things here. We're talking about the actual message that's being delivered in your videos. Like what is the topic? Who is your audience? What is your message? How are you delivering it? What is the value in the video that you are giving to your audience? And uh, we're also talking about a little bit the production value of your video. How is the lighting? You know, make small tweaks to that. How is your editing? All of these things fall under the wider umbrella of your content. So we want to work on improving that 1% better with every video. And then clarity, which is the fourth C in the five C's of YouTube success, has to do with who your audience is and what is your value proposition to that audience. It also has to do with like, why are you doing YouTube in the first place? What are your reasons for wanting to do YouTube? And then through those reasons, who are you trying to reach and what are you trying to preach? For clarity, he talks about the five Fs, which are reasons for wanting to do YouTube. And those five Fs are fun, fulfillment, freedom, fame, and then finance or fortune. Fun is a good reason to want to do YouTube and you definitely want to have fun while you're doing it because you will be doing it for a long time. Ideally, if you're going to be successful with it, um, this is a long game and if you're committing to that and hoping that you make recurring money and things like that down the road from it, you definitely want to be having fun with it as you go. Fulfillment is another reason. Some people have this like intrinsic reason for wanting to teach people things or wanting to educate people. Um, just doing it for the sheer fact of hoping that someone else might benefit or improve or make better decisions or take better actions or steps in the right direction. These are all things that might make someone feel good for making a quality, helpful video. Freedom and then finance or fortune are kind of tied together. If you were starting YouTube for the purpose of having more freedom in your life, then having more money from YouTube, you know, getting that income from YouTube as opposed to from your job is uh, definitely tied to that, right? Getting that income is going to help you have that freedom. And then fame might be a reason that you want to do YouTube, but where does that fall on your list? You know, is that the most important reason to you? Or is that like the fifth reason? Ali talks about, you know, he's got his 5 million subscribers, but he, he doesn't really feel 
famous and he doesn't really want to feel famous. He says there are these moments where he might be like in the coffee shop and somebody recognizes him and goes, Oh, like my brother watches your content and says you're really good. Hey, I recognize you. Something like that. If you're trying to be the next Mr. Beast, well, hey, you got a lot of work ahead of you. And that's totally a fine goal to have. And you'll probably make some money and have some fun and fulfillment along the way. But just where does fame fall in the ranking of the five F's? Food for thought. And that's another F. Call it the six F's now. But the final thought of uh, phase two of the journey, which is to get good, is really just focus on making good videos, whatever that means to your audience, you know, whatever that means to you and to your audience. Ali says that making good videos really just boils down to these three things. Make them click, make them watch, and make them happy. He says that if you can do these three things and do it consistently, you will succeed on YouTube. But he says consistency alone will not get you there. Your content and your videos actually do have to be good. And that brings us to our final C, the fifth C, which is cash. Uh, and that falls under phase three, which is get smart. Because at this point, you likely have some subscribers and therefore potentially a way to monetize them. Now he breaks down the two ways to monetize on YouTube or just to make money in general, which are selling other people's stuff and then selling your own stuff. Now, if you're uploading videos and you think you aren't selling anything, you are actually selling the attention uh, and the eyeballs of your viewers to the subscribers uh, that pay you in the form of AdSense or before you're monetized, they are paying YouTube and maybe that's covering the cost to store your videos in the cloud. That being said, Ali recommends not focusing on AdSense as your primary form of income from YouTube. And instead he recommends actually tying your YouTube channel to something that you can offer your audience. And this could be physical products, digital products, coaching courses, accountability, etc. But his whole point is that YouTube itself is not a business, but rather a marketing tool to drive people towards your business. Now, since you made it to the end, I did promise you his parting words of wisdom from this course. Uh, one quote that I really enjoyed was, everything that needs to be said has already been said, but since nobody was listening, it needs to be said again. This is something that helps us fight imposter syndrome. The fact that we feel like we don't have anything original to say is irrelevant because nobody has anything original to say, but you have the opportunity to share what you know, even though it's been shared hundreds or thousands or millions of times, depending on what it is, even though it's been shared already, it's never been shared in the way that you would share it or that you would present it. An example he gives is like of the, the book Atomic Habits, you know, very popular book. He says, maybe you love that book and maybe you really want to do a book summary on it. But everyone under the sun has already done a book summary of Atomic Habits. It doesn't really matter because no one has ever done it the way that you would do it. And you might reach a different audience who's never seen any of those other summaries. And your book summary of Atomic Habits could change their lives. So... You shouldn't think of that as a reason not to do it. Now, that was a quote that Ali borrowed from someone else. This next one, I believe, is an Ali Abdal original quote. He said, do as much overthinking as you want, but only on the foundation of consistency. Consistent execution and action trump everything else. And then the most actionable tip that he said when you're creating your YouTube videos is to spend way more time on the title and then the thumbnail than anything else. Like these are the two most important things and you should be thinking about them before you even film your video or write your script. Think about the title and spend a lot of time thinking about what title might grab someone's attention because if they never click on your video, it doesn't matter how good it was. So keeping that in mind, here is the 10 step framework that I created based on what he taught in this webinar. Step one is to research your topic and make sure that it is a trending topic or something that might be searchable 
Like, are people searching for the thing that you're going to make a video about? So just do a little research, look at other YouTube channels, look at other videos, like search for the topic you're thinking of in YouTube and see what comes up, um, see what auto populates in the search field, check Google Trends, but just do a little research before anything else. Step two, take that research and craft it into an idea. Step three, take that idea and craft that into a clickable title that people will actually want to click on. Once you have a title, step four is to craft a compelling thumbnail. So make sure you have a thumbnail that is going to stand out, that's going to grab someone's attention uh, as they're scrolling through the list of videos or looking at it on their desktop. Um, it stops them in their tracks and makes them want to at least look at the title to decide if they want to click on that video. Step five is then to work on the script. Step six is to film it. Step seven is to edit it. Step eight, I would say get your SEO together. So fill out that description for the video, get the tags together that you want to use and uh, anything else that pertains to SEO get your chapter titles ready. And then step nine is to publish it. Finally, step 10 is to analyze and repeat. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing if you got any kind of value and wanna see the next thing that we have to offer. Of course, I'd love to have you subscribe, but you don't have to, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Never mind. I shouldn't have even asked, uh, but definitely check out this video right here.